we are still sheltering in place, and we are glad to bring you this service via either Facebook or YouTube. Thank you for joining in with us today. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter season, and we are thankful for your presence here. Wherever you are, it is also first Sunday, and so we ask you now, as we get started in our worship service, as we did last first Sunday, if you can just now secure a cracker, a piece of bread, some kind of liquid, if it's not, if it's not dark, if it's apple juice, if it's cocoa, whatever you have, it doesn't matter what it is, it matters the spirit in which we do it. So we ask that you now be ready for Lord's Supper, and we're going to share that together today. Well, I'm glad you're here. At this time, I want to also encourage you not to forget, if you are on Facebook, you can use your thumbs up or your heart as your digital amen. If you hear something you like from the choir, or you just feel something good happening, or you hear a word that you like, please go ahead and let us know that you're with us. Also want to encourage you now to send, share this with someone else so that we can let, make sure that all around this country and perhaps even the world, someone is seeing St. Luke for the very first time. Amen? Well, at this time, I'd like you to join in with me in our Easter season call to worship. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll begin with our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
and our neighbors. God, we confess to you that while we know well the story of your victory over the grave, it is not a story we always live. We are dragged down by all manner of death. Fear may suffocate us. The loss of dreams and hopes for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our nation. Sorrow may wall us off like a grave, isolating us with anger, frustration, and grief. Yet the stories of our faith are inscribed not with the marks of death, but with the word, Hallelujah. So in this Easter season, we pray that you fill us with fear and great joy, so that, like those women who came to the tomb expecting death, we may instead find the radiant new life that is ever before us in your resurrection. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, rest in the promise of God. That if we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And to that, the church ought to say, Amen. I invite you now to join in with me in our scripture reading for, for this morning. It is taken from the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 19. 1 Peter chapter 2 starting in verse 19. And I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, where you'll find these words. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing nothing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who called us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. One God. Amen. At this time, I'd like you to join us in our doxology.
so do I. Now for our morning announcements. And now for our morning announcements. We invite all of you to come back right here on Facebook Live on Tuesday and join us for Bible study. Bible study is led each week by our senior pastor, Clifford Matthews. We are having a great time in Bible study. We live stream it. You can ask your questions and learn more about the scripture. So please tune in right back here again on Tuesday at 12 noon for our virtual Bible study. Our 70th annual church anniversary is going virtual. That's right, we have not canceled the celebration. We are just changing it and adapting it to the virtual space. So we want you to tune into our Facebook and our YouTube all month long throughout the month of May as we celebrate 70 years of St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. You will see songs, you will see sermons, you will see testimony from members that have been with us for a very long time. We want to celebrate and enjoy this with you. So make sure you stay tuned to our Facebook page and continue to interact with us as we celebrate 70 years of St. Luke. Now more than ever, it's time for you to be in the know. If you're not a member in the know, make sure that you subscribe to our text message service. Here's how. All you have to do is text the keyword know, K-N-O-W, to the number that you see on the screen, 704-734-9562. Again, that number is 704-734-9562. When you text the keyword no to that number, you will get a response from 62488. Make sure that you save both of those numbers in your phones so that you know that it's St. Luke that is messaging you. We promise we will not spam you with any unnecessary details or announcements. We will only give you the most pertinent information as it relates to the ministry. Again, in this time of COVID crisis, make sure that you stay informed and stay in the know. Thank you so much again for joining us here on our Facebook page. We have a ask for you. Please make sure that you like us here on Facebook. Not only like us here on Facebook, but go over to youtube.com slash St. Luke CLT and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every week on Wednesday, we like to call it Word on Wednesday, we will replay our broadcast from the previous Sunday there on YouTube. You can also find that replay back here on Facebook as we will share that link here. So no matter if you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, you have a way to worship and enjoy the word from St. Luke. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us for our online broadcast of St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. It is at this point in the service where we like to welcome our visitors. So if you are virtually visiting with us for the first time, will you take an opportunity in a moment right now to write in the comment section. Let us know what church you're visiting from or where you're watching us at from on this Sunday morning. We'll be sure to give you a response and welcome you to our feed. Well, my time is up, as our pastor would say. But before I go, please make sure that you pass the link. Now in our service where we would pass the peace, but in the midst of our virtual worship, we like to say we're going to pass the link. So hit that share button right there on the bottom corner of your screen. Pass this link, share it to your page, and let everyone know we're worshiping here at St. Luke. We'll now turn it back over to the hands of our praise and worship team.
have any pastor announcements to make. First of all, I want to say thank you again for joining us. I have been joining us this morning. I appreciate your support. Thank you. If you're not a member of St. Luke, if you're tuning in for the first time or watching us for the first time, know that we are honored by your presence. Thank you for your vote of confidence. And we do hope that something that is said or sung today may help you along life's journey. Amen. Let's give God a praise for those who are watching for the first time, those who are listening to us via this digital platform. Well, if you're watching, you can tell that we are making improvements in how you view our service. So right now, we have three cameras that are rolling, really four, so that you can have a multi-dimensional look at us today. I want to thank God for that. I want to thank God for uh, the leadership uh, under the direction of Mr. Jarvis Miller, Mr. DJ Boyd, Minister James Rice, uh, who are working hard to ensure that your viewing experience is up to par and it is in keeping with the brand that is St. Luke. So thank God for them and we hope that you appreciate the improvements we're making. And just know this, that long after COVID and all of that, uh, we are digital from now on. Amen. So even when we come back to the sanctuary, we're still going to broadcast live each and every week. Thank God for this medium. Thank God is allowing us to touch people clearly around the world. So thank you again for how you support us to help us make these improvements. Well, you watched the video already. Uh, this is May, and this is St. Luke Church Anniversary Month, and we intend to celebrate. Amen. For 70 years, St. Luke has been at this corner, serving this community, this city, this state, and the nation. And we want to continue that celebration. We're going to celebrate even though it will be in a virtual space. So I want to invite you to be uh, watching out this week on Facebook for our various uh, posts that celebrate where we've been. Don't forget, if you could, to please use and pass it on, our theme is hashtag still thriving. We are still thriving. Hashtag still thriving, S-L-M-B-C. Hashtag still thriving, S-L-M-B-C. Spread the word, and don't forget, we need your help. We want you and your family now to start taking videos, using whatever you have. And all we want you to do is simply say, Happy Anniversary St. Luke. Uh, forward that to the church, to Mr. Jarvis Miller. Uh, we'll let you know how to do that, and we will share that throughout this month as we celebrate St. Luke's Church Anniversary. The third Sunday, we're going to have a great service here. So thank you in advance. God loves you now. Concerning what happens next, have heard that Mecklenburg County has eased some restrictions, but we're still under the order of North Carolina. Just want to be clear that we anticipate not being back into service until sometime in June, if not the first Sunday in July. And even when that occurs, we're going to have some restrictions as far as how many, and we want you to know we are working to keep ourselves abreast to what that looks like, and as soon as we have a clear understanding, we'll spread that word. But until then, we do ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. Please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, if you feel bad and you have some symptoms, go see some, really, call your doctor. And if you can, shelter in place still, wear your mask, wear your gloves, and make sure you stay safe. We are in prayer for those who have been impacted by COVID, and we ask that you will continue to do what you have to do. Well, at this time, I want us to transition to church in prayer. I want to tell you one of the things I have enjoyed just doing in this COVID shutdown is to talk to God and reflect upon the goodness of God. I know we're living in crazy and confusing times. But I want to tell you, we serve a God that is still able. And I'm not sure what you're going through. Maybe it's not COVID. 
Maybe it's unemployment. Maybe you just have a lot of anxiety and fear because of where we are right now in our community. Whatever it is, I want you to know we serve a God that's able. And right where you are, I invite you to prepare yourself to pray. Prayer doesn't change everything. No, a prayer will change you. And it gives you a confidence that no matter what it is, God's got you. And everything is going to be all right. I'd like you to get ready for church and prayer. After a selection, I will lead us to God's throne of grace.
that can't be compared to you. So dear God, you're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our adoration. You're worthy of our everything. And God can never do another thing for us. You've done enough already for us to always say thank you. God, we worship you this morning. And to God, we come to say thank you for all the things you have done. From last night's lying down to this morning's early rise, from food on our table. A roof over our head, a floor to stand upon, a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, we say thank you that some bills are paid, that you pay the way out of nowhere. God, we say thank you that you gave us another day, protected us in our family. God, we say thank you. That you kept your word. That you did what you said you would do. How you fought some battles. How you opened doors. How you were a prayer of protection all around us. God, we say thank you for the Son Jesus, who is our Savior and our Lord. Thank you for his cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you that because we live, we can face whatever comes our way. So dear God, we give you glory. And we thank you for all that you've done. Now dear God, somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs a healing in the body. Somebody, God, is fighting COVID. Somebody has cancer or lupus or HIV or whatever it is, God. They need you right now. We know that you are God of healing. So touch, heal, and deliver right now. And we'll give you the glory if you can do what you will do. Dear God, we come on now praying for somebody who needs a financial breakthrough. Somebody may have lost their job because of what we're going through as a world. Somebody, dear God, has had a hard time right now paying the rent. And they need their own. Somebody right now, God, they're at the end of their ropes. They got more bills and they got money. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, open up the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing just for them. Somebody, God, needs clarity of God. There's a relationship that needs healed. Dear God, we ask that you do it right now. We pray for the leader of our country. We pray for our State and our local leaders, God, we ask that you use them to help not just those who are rich and powerful, but all your children who are calling upon your name. We ask you to send a special blessing to all the members and friends of St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. Give us a pride about who we are and help us to tell the world there is a Savior that will make a difference in their lives. Now, dear God, we ask you to go with us in the remainder of our service. Use us for your glory. Have your way. This is our prayer. We ask you in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Tell somebody, God loves you. And everything is going to be all right.
preparing for our sermon by turning to a familiar portion of the Bible, the book of Psalms. And I want to go to perhaps the best known psalm and perhaps the best known text in the Bible. Psalm 23. The 23rd Psalm. Psalm. Psalm 23. I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest Battle. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This morning I want to preach for a few moments from the subject. A theological response to COVID-19 and anything else. A theological response to COVID-19 and anything else. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, where I am, you brought me. What I know, you taught me. What I have, what I am, Lord, that you may. Lord, I am depending on you. Can't do nothing till you come. This is your servant's prayer. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. A theological response to COVID-19 and anything else. I don't have to say what we all know, and that is that we as a world are in the grips of a powerful virus, COVID-19. It has jumped nation's boundaries. It has impacted the rich and the poor. It has come upon persons who speak many different languages, and it has impacted nearly every aspect of our country. Our economy is teetering. Hospitals are working under the heavy load caused by this virus. School systems are trying to rethink how to educate Colleges are rethinking curriculum and how they deliver education. Everything has been impacted by COVID-19. Because we are human and we are rational beings, and we come at this from 
from various disciplines. It has been commonplace to talk about a response to COVID from, let's say, a public health posture. It's been common to talk about COVID from, let's say, an economic posture. It's been common to talk about COVID from a national security posture. Talk about COVID from psychology and sociology. But I come today as a preacher, a preacher who stands in the Christian tradition to talk about COVID from a theological posture. In other words, I've come to raise a question. And the question is, what does COVID say about God and what does it mean for the people of God? As we contemplate and look at the impact of this virus, is there a God word for us? Is this something that took God by surprise? Is this a virus that even heaven is afraid of? Is heaven scrambling now to find his own vaccine? Or is God still sitting on God's throne? And is God still ruling over this world? If so, what can we discern theologically, and how do we respond to COVID theologically? I'm aware, love, that COVID may not be a problem for some of y'all. Some of y'all are big and bad, and y'all don't scare easily. Maybe something else is bothering you. Maybe you got a diagnosis you can't share. Maybe your money has gotten funny. Maybe your family is falling apart. Whatever your problem might be, I want to tell you, there ought to be a theological response. Whatever it is, we ought to get somewhere and find out from God. God, what are you saying to us in the midst of what we're going through right now? A theological response to COVID-19 This text, the 23rd Psalm, the most quoted portion of Judea of the Christian Bible. It is perhaps the best known piece of scripture that has leaped from our Judeo Christian heritage. And it's a piece of scripture known by persons who practice other faiths or who have no faith at all. You find the 23rd Psalm inscribed on cards. You find it on stationery. You find it wherever we gather together and we try to understand life in all of its complexities. This psalm has comforted persons in the midst of trial. This psalm has been for some the way they transition from life to life everlasting. This psalm of David, ascribed to David, it found its final composition and revision during the exile when Israel had to rethink what it meant to serve God and go through at the same time. Somebody reminded them of the word And so even while they were by the rivers of Babylon, even while they were going through their own Babylonian experience, they decided to pick up this song, let it fit their context, and it spoke to what they were going through. That's what I've come to do today. I've come to pick up this song and let it speak to us a God Psalm begins with a powerful affirmation. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, 
shall not want. If you have a King James Bible, you would notice that word is is italicized, which suggests in the Hebrew it's not there. It should say, the Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want. What a powerful affirmation. What it says is, because God is my shepherd, there's nothing that I really will want. I don't have to worry about whether or not I have what I need because I have a God who is my shepherd. Because God is my shepherd, I shall not what a powerful affirmation for us right now in the midst of COVID. God is our shepherd. Therefore, God's guidance and God will make sure we have everything that we need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He picked up on the metaphor now of a shepherd and then gave
And then he said, get this now. I love this song because this is not a song of somebody who is an optimist that has no foundation. This is not a song of somebody who's talking optimistic or hopeful but has no foundation for it. I'm going to get in trouble now. It's not like the leader of our country saying how good things are, but you know for yourself, it's bad right now. This is David Wright. David doesn't have time for modern faith that always tries to avoid the reality that is in. David makes it plain. He understands that in life there will be some stuff that we can't always handle. Some stuff that'll make us afraid. That's why he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Did y'all hear that? Even though in my context there are things that I'm afraid of, I don't fear beyond He has a rod and a staff. In other words, my shepherd knows how to fight for me. My shepherd knows how to protect me. And I wish I had a witness today that can testify there's some battles you haven't had to fight on your own. There's some things that God took care of before you could even touch it. Do I have a witness here that God knows how to let us
because he does all of that. He says, surely, because of who he is, I shall have goodness and mercy shall follow me wherever I go. And he says, and because of that, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Get that. David is saying to God, God does all of that as my shepherd. I am confident that wherever I go, goodness and mercy shall follow me. I want to tell somebody right now, whether it's COVID or anything else, you can rest assured somewhere in your life right now there's goodness and there's mercy. There's God's grace. God is working and you can rest in the promises of God. Yeah, he makes it clear. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he leads me by grass and meadows. Yeah, he has a way of putting me by riverbanks. He, he knows how to bring life back into me. He ensures that justice is my inheritance. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not afraid because his rod and his staff, they take care of me. He lets me enjoy the good life now. I don't have to wait till I get to heaven. I can enjoy the good life now because he gives me abundance right now and he lets me know that wherever I go, goodness and mercy shall follow me. That's a theological response to COVID, some stuff we don't understand. And some of y'all have people talking about COVID is God's punishment. I'm not saying that. Some of y'all have folks who tell y'all that God is trying to bring America back to God. Well, I don't buy that. I don't know why we have COVID. Maybe COVID is here. Maybe COVID is here because we have nourished this world. Maybe COVID.
But you have a shepherd who laid down his life just for you. That means you matter to God. That means no matter what you've been through, who you are, what label somebody put on you, you matter to God. It doesn't matter what folk call you behind your back, you matter to God. Your life has meaning. You are somebody to God. God gave his best for you. He gave his son that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I know we're living right now in a scary time, but I want to invite you today where you are to get to know this good shepherd. His name is Jesus. He loves you just the way you are, and he has a plan for your life. Right where you are, I invite you to make him yours. I invite you to accept him as your good shepherd. Hebrew Bible Old Testament 
What it says is that for us, Jesus represents God's gift to us that nourishes us and satisfies our need for wholeness with God. Today, I invite you to join us now in partaking in this. I'm going to go to the table down here, and I'm going to take my element. I have, I have the old traditional, you know, the St. Luke. I have the cup with the wafer on top. Uh, I left my cup and my cracklings at home today by mistake. So I have this. And I'm going to come down to the table and lead us in this, get the family together, and let's celebrate this together. Don't forget to share the good news about St. 